For many quilters, choosing their fabrics is the fun stage of quilting where anything is possible. You get to dream, you get to play and explore with different colors, lights, darks, possibilities, and that is what we're talking about in this episode of How to Quilt. <laughs> Envisioning the Your First Modern Quilt that I taught years ago to create the How to Quilt video series, I started thinking really hard about the palette of colors that I wanted to use. There are lots of sampler quilts out there and some of them are more successful than others. I think the real value of a sampler quilt is the opportunity it gives us to practice different kinds of skills and then create a cohesive quilt out of it. But it was really important to me that the finished project at the end of the How to Quilt video series was something you really wanted to have, something beautiful that you were proud to show off or gift. And to me, choosing the fabric colors really played a big part in that. So, there are a couple things that I want to discuss before I share with you the specific colors that I chose for this quilt. First off is that I used all solids for this quilt. I think solids are very easy to relate to visually for a lot of us because it's just the color, the saturated hue that we're looking at. It also makes it easier for us to discuss ideas of light versus dark or warm versus cool because those concepts aren't muddied by a lot of print going on. It's just the color that's there. But I, I also really wanted to make this quilt very accessible. So I intentionally chose fabric that I knew you could get that exact fabric. One of the other things that is beneficial about using all solids for this quilt is that solids don't have a right side and a wrong side. So a printed fabric, for example, because it's printed on one side, has a right side and a wrong side, and you can only use the right side facing up as you construct your quilt blocks. With a solid fabric, however, you can use the right side or the wrong side facing up because they're both kind of the right side. The benefit of that for someone who's early on in the quilt making process is that there's a lot less waste. And so that means that this particular quilt, you can utilize some of your scraps in ways you wouldn't be able to with printed fabric. Having said that, a lot of quilters really enjoy using prints as they build their quilt, and you can too. I'm going to share with you the exact colors of Kona cotton solids that I used to construct this quilt. You do not have to use those colors at all. You are absolutely free to create your own color palette. In fact, I have sample quilts that are floating around out there in different shades that I think you will love to see. Some in all black and white prints, some in all low volume, very unsaturated fabrics, some in stripes and dots, some in a monochromatic color scheme where every fabric is one shade of the same core color. There are lots of ways that you can construct a sampler quilt and make it really beautiful. You could even go into only fabrics that have been gifted to you. You could even make it all scrappy if you wanted and every single fabric in the entire quilt is different. Please don't feel constrained by the fabrics that I'm demonstrating. And keep in mind that your quilt should always be something that you don't just enjoy when it's finished, but that you enjoy making. I have a beautiful piece of art that I love that is a floral design, and it includes all of these colors. When I was thinking about the palette for this quilt, I looked at it and I thought, ooh, yes, these are the colors I wanna look at all the time. I knew that I would be working with these a lot to make the How to Quilt video series, so it was really important to me that I selected fabrics that I love. The other thing I knew, because of the way the quilt is designed, is that um, we would work some with value, which is light, the amount of white and black in a color, so light versus dark. We would also work with warm colors versus cool colors. Um, and I wanted to be able to illustrate those concepts really clearly. I also wanted to talk a little bit about um, saturated colors versus neutrals, uh, but I did not wanna make a quilt that was all white as the background, even though I think that's a beautiful look. Um, so here's what I came up with. I came up with a light and a dark green, a light and a dark pink, a light and a dark blue, a neutral peachy color that's not white but is light and goes with everything for the borders, a saturated sort of medium gray that was a nice neutral to play with in mixed in with all of these brights, 
And then sort of my, my signature golden color. All of these are Kona cotton solids. Um, Kona kind of gets thrown around in the quilting world as a generic term by a lot of shops, but it is actually a trademarked fabric. I get no endorsement from the company, but the manufacturer is Robert Kaufman, and it is absolutely one of the easiest to find. So I was looking for fabrics that I knew if you wanted to duplicate this exact quilt, you'd be able to get. So here are the color names. Uh, this gray is called Grizzly. It is Kona Cotton Grizzly. This peach is called Ice Peach. This is the border and sashing for the quilt. It gets mixed in with this green color, so I really needed these to be beautiful together, but I also wanted this to be a non-white neutral. I wanted the gray color because I needed to balance out all of these incredibly saturated shades with something else that was also neutral, but not tan or white or black. Could you use tan or white or black? Yes, of course you could. Could you use white in place of the peach? Yes, of course you could. These are what I chose because I felt like they were a little fresher, a little different from what I had done in the past, um, but would still have a nice modern vibe to them. For the paired colors, I knew that our first block was going to be Log Cabin, which is alternating bars on left and right of the block, and I wanted to be able to play a little bit with the lights and darks there. Um, so I have this very light turquoise color called Capri. It coordinates beautifully with this color, which is called Ultramarine. Those go side by side very often. Light and dark pinks, I have Azalea Pink and this Cerise color, which I, I absolutely can't get away from in my whole life. I use it all the time. For the greens, I chose Gecko and a fabulous color called Pickle that I'm just in love with. And then sort of my signature yellowy orangey, which is called papaya. Again, all of these fabrics are Kona cotton solids. There are a lot of solid fabrics on the market. They are of varying qualities. Some of them are more likely to bleed than others. I have had extremely good results with Kona cotton solids made by Robert Kaufman manufacturers. I don't get any endorsement deal from them. Those are just the fabrics that I have been using for the last nearly two decades of quilting, and I really love the results I get from them. If you use the color names that I've included on the downloadable PDF from howtoquilt.video, then you'll be able to get those exact fabrics. When you do select your fabrics and compile them all together to prepare for making our quilt, Keep in mind that I've included plenty of margin in the amount of fabric that I've required in order for you to make room for the mistakes that all of us make along the way. None of us can or should expect to be perfect, and that includes when we're cutting things out for a quilt. So I've required three-quarter yard for each of the solids that make up the body of the blocks, and then an additional yard and a half of the sashing and border fabric, the ice peach fabric. You can definitely get away with a little bit less if you're using all solids and you're extremely careful with your cutting, probably a half a yard. If you're using all prints where it's, you know, like people with heads, duckies and bunnies is kind of the joke I like to make, because there's a top and a bottom to that character that's on the fabric, then you can't very well flip a piece of fabric upside down and use it either way. That's called a directional fabric. So if you select a print, that is a directional fabric that has an up and a down or a left and a right, you're going to want to lean toward that three quarters of a yard. It's just going to take more in order for you to maintain all of those, those prints in the same direction as we go along through the course of the quilt. Lastly, on the fabric requirements PDF printable, I've also indicated that you're going to need batting, you're going to need backing fabric, and you're going to need some fabric for the binding. In this case, I have three beautiful um, block printed fabrics that I actually purchased fairly recently. I saw all three of them online and I thought, um, these colors are reminding me a lot of the colors that I'm using in the How to Quilt video series. So what if I get a couple of them and see what works? And it turns out they all work. So these are going to be amazing backs for the quilt. I also had this one which was languishing in a closet that I had had for years and just never used, that I think works really nicely as well. The peachy color is not exactly the same shade as the ice peach, but because it's on the back of the quilt, I think there's a little bit of margin there to play around with it.
If you purchase three quarter yard of all the fabrics that are listed, you may end up with enough extra that you can either combine those smaller pieces to create a unique back for your quilt or use some of those smaller pieces to create the bias binding that I'll teach you how to cut later. For my binding, I bought a little bit of extra gecko and I'll, because I'm using this as the accent color mixed in with the ice peach for the borders and the sashing, I'm going to use the same color for my binding. So I actually purchased an additional half yard of gecko for my binding. I planned that out ahead of time. You may have a different color mixed in with your palette that you think will be excellent as your binding. Consider going ahead and purchasing that at the beginning and then you don't have to worry about it down the road. Alternately, you can select a single beautiful print that includes a lot of the different colors that are included in your quilt and combine those to make the backing of your quilt. But keep in mind that we're making a quilt top, which is what we think of as the front of the quilt. We'll also need a quilt back and then we'll need the binding for the edge of our quilt. Some of those fabrics can be selected as we go. So, like with a lot of other things in the videos in the How to Quilt video series, I never want you to feel overwhelmed as we work our way through. If you feel like frozen, right, analysis paralysis at this step, don't choose anything. You can select the fabrics for each block as we go along, and a lot of quilters do. For example, one of the reasons I wanted to build this video series was for the quilters in my Murder Mystery Quilt project. As we go throughout the year, they have never seen the finished project for the Murder Mystery Quilt. They only see one block at a time. So for some of those quilters, the idea of choosing fabric for an entire year without having any idea what the finished quilt will look like can be overwhelming. And I regularly encourage them, take your time. Once you see the pattern for the block that we'll be doing, choose your fabric then. And that works for the How to Quilt video series sampler quilt as well. You don't have to choose your fabrics today. You can start with the log cabin block, which is the first block we'll be building, and make decisions as we go along with each block as it comes. I do encourage you to consider a basic color palette that you're shooting for, and sometimes choosing your backing fabric can help you do that. So if I have a fabric that has a print that I really, really, really love, I can use that as the starting point and select my other fabrics to go with it, kind of working backward in fabric selection in case looking at this list of fabrics makes you feel overwhelmed today. I could play with fabric all day and lots of quilters will tell you that they do. <laughs> it can be fun to take out the fabrics that we saved or had left over from a project or that we fell in love with and didn't know how to use. Take them out, visit them once in a while but I genuinely, sincerely believe they don't belong in a cabinet. The more you love a fabric, the more you should use it in a quilt where you're going to see it all the time. Before we can start cutting our pieces up, however, and putting them into our sampler quilt, we'll need to prepare our fabric and talk some about pressing and good technique. So that's what we're doing in the next episode of How to Quilt.